Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our short webinar on address space sampling, commonly referred to as ABS. My name is Mansoor Fahimi. I'm the Executive Vice President and Chief Data Scientist at Marketing Systems Group. This uh, presentation about ABS will focus about its applications for surveillance programs, specifically for COVID-related research um, that is um, uh, being conducted uh, these days. Uh, in terms of the, the outline of the presentation, um, we will talk briefly about what is ABS, why is it um, a fantastic tool for COVID-related survey research, then we'll try <clears throat> to get under the hood of ABS. We'll talk about how the list from which samples are selected, sampling frame that is, is compiled. And the, the main focus of the, the presentation will be the refinements that Marketing Systems Group adds to the uh, ABS sampling frame. We talk about some of the sampling options, some of the survey administration options, weighting considerations, and wrap it up. So what is ABS? As mentioned uh, at the beginning, ABS is address-based sampling, specifically using the delivery sequence file from the postal service. And this is a database of uh, mail delivery uh, with all kinds of um, information about the delivery points. Uh, most notably, uh, we can differentiate between business and residential delivery points or addresses, as well as a host of address validation and standardizations that, it that enhance the delivery process. Um, so the DSF, is again a database of delivery points. It covers all the delivery points in the US. Uh, by removing undeliverable addresses, um, this uh, database increases the speed as well as cost, uh, or rather decreases the cost of delivery. And uh, it's important to note that through daily feedbacks from thousands of mail carriers, the database in a way is being uh, updated on continuous basis. In spite of all these fantastic uh, uh, characteristics of the delivery sequence file, it is important to note that this is again a database for mail delivery. It's not designed for survey research and this is where MSG comes in. We will talk in detail that because uh, DSF is zip based, zip code based, it doesn't contain all the census ge geographic information that are necessary for survey research. And it contains no demographic information, no population information that is often needed for designing samples, especially for complex surveys. So this is what ABS or address space sampling is about. It's using the delivery sequence file or an evolved or refined version of that for sample selection and survey administration. So why is uh, ABS um, uh, a, a very um, suitable and effective uh, protocol for conducting COVID related research? For a surveillance program to be scientific, it is critical for samples that are selected to have full coverage uh, of the geodemography of interest. And equally important, it is important for that survey protocol to be versatile enough so that various methods of data collection could be supported. Uh, therefore, multi-mode has to be a part of the the package uh, for conducting uh, successful surveillance programs. Uh, other survey methodologies may also be considered, but we know that more and more telephone-based methods have all kinds of coverage issues and um, online uh, options um, uh, also have issues because the available online panels are often fairly small in size. And then the more important problem is that 
the, the, the majority of the panels out there um, do not provide uh, representative samples and therefore are void of representational properties that a scientific survey sampling program needs. And again, this, this uh, issue, um, um, the problem of, of uh, having a sampling frame that provides complete coverage through the uh, delivery sequence file, MSG, uh, um, through all the enhancements that it provides for DSF, as we will talk about it in more detail, evolves. DSF into a bona fide sampling frame that would be suitable for um, conducting survey research. And this, this process uh, pivots on the initial step, which is MSG takes every single delivery point in the US, identifies the latitude and longitude, meaning geocodes each, each um, delivery point in the database and once each address is geocoded then a host of data from public and commercial sources non-USPS that is type data can be appended to the uh, ABS frame uh, to again to make it uh, suitable for um, complex surveys and as a result of all the appendages that MSG provides, then one can have a near surgical precision for sampling specific and rare subgroups. Uh, all the data that will be available for the entire frame, which means that as far as surveys are concerned for both respondents and non-respondents of the survey can be used for nuanced non-response adjustment which is becoming more and more important as response rates um, are diminishing these days. And on top of that, availability of all the data that MSG appends to the delivery sequence file provides a rich empirical base, meaning that whole bunch of ancillary data can be added to the respondents without actually adding those questions or the corresponding questions to the questionnaire. Uh, so it's sort of free information that can be used to expand analytical possibilities. Now let's get under the, 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 the hood and see what the delivery sequence file is. Uh, we'll talk about some of the uh, particulars of DSF and then go into the enhancements that MSG provides to the DSF. Uh, so again, DSF is a database the, of mail delivery that includes every single delivery point in the US. It is LAX and CAS certified, meaning locatable address conversion and coding accuracy support systems are applied uh, that, and all these improve delivery and reduce uh, mailing costs. Uh, there is also a supplementary database from the USPS called no stat file think of it as a drawer where you toss in a hodgepodge of stuff um, that sometimes we tap into this um, supplementary database includes information such as new addresses that or new housing units that are have not started receiving mail yet it may have some information about vacant units beyond what is available directly in the delivery sequence file and then it also may have some additional information about drop points which is a delivery type which uh, that we'll be talking about shortly and it's also important to note that some of the uh, some of those who have old understanding of ABS may criticize this methodology saying that there are simplified addresses. These are addresses that are void of delivery information and hence can be considered as a uh, ding against ABS. But it's important to note that while a decade ago, there were millions of these simplified addresses uh, uh, ad these addresses are now a thing of the past. There are only uh, a few thousands of such uh, delivery units and they are rapidly diminishing because of the law for converting all addresses uh, to, to have a um, 
standard format for 911 emergency services. And on top of that, MSG taps into several commercial databases and finds the, the, the full delivery information for some of these uh, simplified addresses. But bottom line, it's a negligible chunk accounting for uh, a fraction of 1% of total delivery points. And again, it is diminishing rapidly. Uh, in terms of address classification, um, the, the DSF identifies each address or each delivery point to a particular type. There are businesses, which again are eliminated from general population surveys. There are addresses labeled as central. These are delivery points that receive mail at a centralized location. Uh, there are some private or commercial uh, agencies that uh, operate on behalf of um, households for receiving and delivering mail. There are curbside deliveries, which is perhaps the most standard where mail is delivered at the curb. Uh, there are drops. Drops are, think of it as some of the gated communities where the address or the delivery information is available to the USPS up to the gate, but the specific units behind the gate, uh, the, 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 the specific informations are unavailable. This is um, not the case for all gated, gated communities, uh, but for some, we have only information up to the gate but as we will talk shortly, MSG has a way of resolving some of these uh, uh, hard to deliver units. Uh, there are educational units. These are colleges, dormitories, uh, fraternities, and buildings that are uh, uh, primarily occupied by students. There are seasonal units for snowbirds, units that uh, are occupied part of the year and uh, do not receive mail during some other parts of the, the year. There are throwback uh, bags. These are um, delivery uh, uh, points, the regular street address-based delivery point, but the, the mail is uh, delivered to a PO box at the uh, request of the recipient. And then there are also vacant um, units these are units that have been uh, vacant for over 90 days, and we typically exclude these when it comes to selection of the A sample from an um, ABS frame. Uh, here you see some counts for these various uh, delivery points. Collectively, there are about uh, 145, call it, a million delivery points in the US. The majority are the, the standard format city style. Uh, and there are a smattering of different um, other types, such as um, PO boxes. Uh, the vast majority of the PO boxes, there are 14 million of them, are duplicate, meaning that um, are not the only way of receiving mail for the uh, recipient, and we in exclude those from uh, sample selection, but those that are the only way of receiving mail are often included. Uh, there are seasonal counts, educational counts, so on and so forth. Back to the drop units, so there are about 700,000 drop points these are, again, think of it as gated communities. Not all of these are gated communities, but that's an easy example to relate to. So there are about 713 of these, uh, 713,000 of these uh, that um, account for over 2 million units. Uh, some of these uh, on deliverable units within drop points uh, are um, augmented by MSG, resolved by MSG, and then there are simplified addresses again that MSG um, identifies its exact delivery uh, by reaching into various databases that we work with. 
Uh, let's talk uh, about some of the USPS trivia before we get to um, the, the, the census um, geographic delineations, which is what surveys are often designed around. So zip code, which um, um, you may not know what it exa uh, exactly stands for. It, is sta it stands for Zone Improvement Plan, obviously a five-digit code that identifies a, ge a geographic delivery area and sometimes a single building or a company with high mail volume. And then on top of the zip, the five digit zip, of course, we have the, the additional or the add on four plus units. The first two digits of the four plus add on represents the zip sector, which is a smaller geographic area within a zip code, uh, such as uh, several blocks uh, or um, group of streets. And the last two digits of the zip plus four add-on is the zip segment, which typically referend, uh, represents uh, smaller geographic areas within a zip sector, such as one floor of a large building or one side of the street. Again, for your USPS trivia, um, there are over 41,000 zip codes. Uh, the majority are general type um, zip codes. And then um, there are also PO box zip codes, military zip codes, and business zip codes. In terms of the population, um, uh, back in 2000, the average population size for a zip code was about 67, 6,800. Uh, and as you see, this number has been increasing, obviously, as the population increases. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the data elements within the DSF. Uh, again, DSF is basically a database of mail delivery, so it's no surprise that we have granular information about the delivery points, primary address, secondary address, city, zip, zip plus four. Uh, all the, 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 the specific delivery um, tidbits that mail carriers use, um, as well as some additional information um, that um, it's typically transparent to us, but uh, nonetheless, all the delivery type information uh, is available. The main usage of these delivery type or data elements is for us to identify which delivery units are in scope for a survey and which ones are to be excluded, such as businesses, such as vacant units, such as a seasonal, educational, group quarter, so on and so forth. And now let's switch to the world of survey research, which is often guided uh, and delineated in terms of geographic uh, definitions uh, from the Census Bureau. So uh, broadly speaking, this is the topology of the US geography, starting at the nation, going down to regions, then divisions, states, counties, tracts, block groups, and then eventually blocks, and some other um, subdivisions that um, we don't need to get into, but nonetheless, it's there for your information. I'm going to spend just a few minutes going over some of these uh, finer census geographic delineations so that uh, you would have a um, full understanding of what they represent. So counties, uh, these are local level of uh, government below state. There are over 3,100 counties in the US. Average county population is about 100,000, but they vary quite a bit in size. Los Angeles County, for example, has 10 million residents, where the Loving County in Texas currently has only 169 residents. Louisiana is divided into parishes, and Alaska is divided into boroughs and not counties. Next, uh, or uh, the next uh, and the hierarchy are tracts. So these are geographic entities within counties 
that are often uh, bounded by uh, visible features. Uh, counties uh, typically have between, uh, rather tracts have um, typically between 2,500 to 8,000 uh, residents, but that too varies quite a bit. The idea is that tracts uh, include a homogeneous group of households with respect to socioeconomic and living condition characteristics. Counties, uh, again, sorry, tracts are subdivided into block groups and blocks. So what are block groups? Block groups are combination of census blocks um, that is a subdivision of track, of course. Uh, they are identified through a special uh, sequencing uh, number, uh, number sequencing process. Uh, there are about uh, or over 211,000 census block groups in the US and Puerto Rico each containing on average about 39 or 40 blocks. Um, average, they include about 600 to 3,000 individuals. And finally, the smallest uh, unit, geographic unit uh, for census is blocks. It's the, the smallest unit for which uh, the Bureau uh, of the Census collects data and tabulates uh, decennial um, estimates, typically bounded by streets, roads, or other features. In the U.S. and Puerto Rico, there are over 8,200,000 census blocks. Um, blocks contain uh, somewhere between zero to hundreds of residents, and there are uh, actually uh, 2 million, about 2,700,000 blocks that have no population. These are perhaps uh, non-residential or unoccupied uh, areas. So now let's get to the uh, core of this presentation, which is all the refinements that MSG applies to the delivery sequence file to create this fantastic tool for survey sampling. As I mentioned, our first step is that the uh, um, every delivery unit receives its unique latitude and longitude through a geocoding geo process. And that's where all the, the magic begins. All the commercial data and all the census data can then be appended to the delivery sequence file. Um, on the public side, we tap into a host of um, data sources from the, the Census Bureau specifically the, the summary files that contains hundreds of tables uh, with information, geodemographic information. Uh, we also use some of the survey data that um, uh, is conducted by the census, such as the American Community Survey or the Current Population Survey. These uh, provide information at the various levels of geography. In particular, ACS, um, it's a large survey, uh, especially when we take the five-year aggregate, we can um, obtain information at the census block group level and append it to addresses within the corresponding CBGs. And of course, a host of uh, commercial databases, these are just a few, Experian, Axiom, InfoUSA, Newstar, so on and so forth. These are fairly expensive databases that we can afford to license because of the volume of the work that we do. And they provide customized geodemographic information beyond what is available from the Census Bureau. Um, and uh, it's, it's the addition of these ancillary data that uh, provides a rich source for um, sampling uh, and survey administration. We also rely on some specialty data that can uh, give us information when it is available for certain households on ailments, behaviors, preferences, as well as various uh, databases of registered voters for political polling and what have you. So in a nutshell, the, the process is, is a very, um, uh, iterative and continuous. 
we start uh, every month with uh, almost 150 million um, addresses, geocode them to unique latitude and longitude, uh, append census geodemographic data after the lat long has been established. Then we append ancillary data from commercial databases. Then we uh, spend quite a bit of time resolving some of the issues that ABS has, such as the simplified addresses, such as some of the drop units in uh, drop points for which full delivery information is not available. Uh, so we resolve those uh, to the best of our capabilities. And that's when we construct an ABS frame suitable for survey administration. And again, this process uh, is repeated every month. So there is a several teams within MSG that are responsible for these various activities. And these get repeated every month. So um, I think by now, hopefully uh, there should be good bit of appreciation about why ABS, why address-based sampling. But just to, to share my perspective, one reason for, or one answer to why ABS has to do with the fact that some of our traditional methods of survey sampling and survey administration um, have issues. Uh, issues that have to do with coverage problems. So when you want to do an RDD survey, a telephone-based uh, survey, and you go below the national level, even at the state level, there are going to be coverage problems thanks to uh, cell phones that don't recognize and respect boundaries. Um, and then uh, these uh, coverage problems lead into indecisive sampling uh, and weighting procedures that um, create nightmare for sampling statisticians such as myself. And then of course, the, 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 the increasing problem of non-response, which is more pronounced for surveys that rely on a single mode or some arduous method uh, of response. Uh, so these are, broadly speaking, some of the reasons why traditional methods um, are having issues. Um, so as mentioned, uh, these days, virtually all surveys, all scientific surveys rely on multiple methods of contacting and conducting surveys to improve coverage, to improve response rate by making the survey more convenient for the respondents, and hopefully when it's done cleverly, at the end, reduced cost as well. And then uh, another reason for um, uh, considering ABS, again, it's the surgical efficiency and accuracy of it because of all the detailed geodemographic geo data that are provided um, that not only aids or makes it possible to have a fairly complex sampling design, but it also helps with uh, other aspects of surveys such as data collection and um, backend um, data enhancement procedures. In terms of modes or modes of contact, I should say, when it comes to an ABS protocol, um, obviously um, we have the mailing address. And the, again, in addition to the just delivery address, we can provide name um, of the uh, current resident and then various household characteristics. Uh, we can now also provide uh, email for about 40% of addresses. And in many cases, we have multiple emails uh, per address, which could be used for pre-notification, if not for actual contact uh, for survey administration. And then uh, finally, the, the phone. We now can append phone number uh, to about 50% of addresses and about half of the, the appended uh, phone numbers are gonna be cellular. 
and we can flag these as cellular so that you don't get in trouble using auto dialing um, and therefore uh, use manual dialing for uh, contacting individuals through um, cell phones. And finally, um, we, we have again access to, to various commercial databases, in particular one that has uh, taken the entire US and partitioned it into, I believe, 170, 180 different segments or clusters. And these segments and clusters partition households based on geodemographics, psychographics, attitudes, needs, uh, purchasing behaviors, uh, and then uh, media preference. So again, 180 or so of these segments, which uh, could come in handy um, for selection of particular type of households, as well as having additional information in your database for um, advanced analytics. In terms of sampling options, um, again, the versatility of ABS protocol um, allows us to select samples in many ways, obviously simple random sample, where every unit has the same chance of selection in the geography of interest. Um, actually, we rarely use simple random sampling. We, our method of choice or preference is systematic sampling whereby the entire frame is first sorted by zip plus four and then um, a selection is made so that you get a perfect geographic representation for the geography of interest. And of course, we can uh, support uh, stratified designs that are based on geography, demography, and various ancillary data, as well as you know behavioral uh, indicators such as if you want to oversample households deemed to have a smoker or households that have a registered voter and uh, various purchase and preference indicators, we can accommodate uh, any type of um, stratified design. Um, MSG is also uh, a unique in that it has resident uh, sampling statisticians and methodologists for super complex sampling uh, procedures that uh, require cost variance optimization. So for those who are familiar with this uh, allocation, uh, our stratification can be guided by the, the, the expense or the, the cost per interview CPI within various strata and the variability of the outcome measure that you expect to see in various stratum. Uh, in various strata. And then, uh, of course, uh, depending on simplifying assumptions that can be made, for example, if cost and variability are the same across strata, this, this allocation becomes a simple allocation as a function of size of the, the, the strata, or the, the cost could be the same, yet the, the variability is different, and therefore we go to this allocation model. Conversely, when, when variability is the same, but it is the cost in, in different strata that uh, drives the total budget, and then we go to this model for allocation. The point being that um, we are not simply a list vendor, a sample vendor. We can support you with, with all sorts of complex sampling needs, as well as post-survey uh, data uh, enhancement procedures, such as weighting, imputation of missing data, as well as advanced analytics, which when you work with survey data, data that carry weights requires special skills and know-how uh, and uh, special procedures that should be used um, for proper estimation. We are reaching the end of the presentation, so let me just quickly share with you a few um, survey administration options. Uh, there are obviously many different options, um, mostly um, follow a process similar to what's listed here. So we start with a sample of addresses. It's, it's a pretty well-established fact that if you send some kind of notification card, 
you increase the, the, the response rate. So under this, this option, uh, we can, uh, or you can start by calling for addresses that have been matched to a telephone. Those uh, who don't have a telephone match or remain as non-respondents can then be contacted through mail and various refusal conversion um, procedures could be applied post the, the, the mail out to get to the number of completed surveys that you uh, desire. A variation of this uh, is when uh, we start with the sample of addresses and instead of going, um, well, we do send a pre-notification card, but instead of going to phone as the first attempt, you have the initial mail out, then followed by phone when you have phone for the address and then various uh, uh, steps uh, to convert non-respondents, again, to increase response rate and um, um, get the number of surveys that you need. And finally, a, a more um, common approach these days is the so-called push to web, where you start with the ABS uh, list, send out the pre-notification, and then you send out the initial mail out, uh, but immediately you suggest uh, contacted uh, households to go to a specific website for partaking in the survey, or this could be done by phone. And it's after that uh, initial push to web uh, because of its simplicity and cost saving features that you would go to other um, uh, refusal conversion modes in order to increase response rate and uh, get as close to the number of surveys that you need. And of course, there are variations to this theme and um, depending on the, the budget and um, time constraints, um, these steps can be um, modified. Lastly, uh, in terms of weighting considerations, again, when I put my survey sampling hat on, I find this very appealing when it comes to ABS. The fact that we have a single frame with unambiguous selection probabilities makes the process of weighting very coherent, very straightforward, and very effective. Um, by taking advantage of hundreds of ancillary data that MSG appends to the ABS, as I mentioned, you would have unparalleled possibilities for very nuanced and granular non-response adjustment weighting, and then of course uh, added um, covariates uh, for your analytical needs. And then uh, um, I do want to mention that uh, one of um, our important groups within MSG is our so-called GeoDemo team. Uh, members of this team are well versed in various public and commercial databases that um, we can um, uh, work with to get you population counts, be it for the design of the sample or for backend processes such as weighting. So bottom line, uh, we have what it takes to help you traverse the path, the very nonlinear path from the respondents to your study sample, to the sampling frame, and eventually extrapolating it to the target universe. Uh, and these are all processes, again, that are very coherent, very um, effective under the ABS paradigm. So let me close by uh, reviewing why ABS, uh, especially when it comes to surveillance programs uh, and, uh, and particularly uh, nowadays uh, for all the COVID research that is funded uh, through government and various nonprofit uh, organizations. It's the gold standard for sampling uh, the, because it provides complete coverage of all the delivery points in the US. 
again, a single frame makes it very transparent and eff effective uh, when it comes to sampling. And that transparency and coherence leads to effective weighting and very um, non-fuzzy analytics and extrapolations. The ancillary data that we brag about um, come from many sources, and we have the in-house resources to do the, the appendages that we are proud of. These come from, again, government sources, as well as a, a myriad of uh, commercial sources. And that's how enhanced address-based sampling frame becomes suitable for complex designs. And it allows you to have very efficient sampling process for reaching rare subgroups or tiny geographies, something that is becoming virtually impossible through telephone method, for example. And then uh, again, uh, it, this methodology is conducive to all modes of contact and data collection which not only increases response rate and eventually coverage, but also inherent to that is the convenience that these uh, multiple methods of participation provide to respondents. Because these days we gotta do whatever we can to make it as easy and appealing for respondents to partake in our surveys. Um, and then finally, I wanna share with you a few um, standard references. Obviously, the Aport Task Force, which I had the privilege of being a co-author, provides a fairly detailed, maybe a little too voluminous, but nonetheless a fairly detailed description of most of what I have talked about here. Um, had the privilege of working with our late Dale Culp, uh, publishing an early paper, um, which you are welcome to um, review. And of course, other um, researchers uh, have done great work um, identifying some of the uh, issues of an ABS approach, as well as uh, the remedies that they have suggested, minding you that some of the issues, such as those identified back in you know, 2009 or so, are probably a thing of the past. As the delivery sequence file continues to be more complete and as we get uh, more efficient uh, with um, using this methodology for survey research. So at the end, I'd like to leave you with a statement from my favorite uh, poet, um, Rumi, especially perhaps uh, relevant to these difficult days we are dealing with. So the wound is the place where light enters you. With that, I thank you for your attention. Um, you are more than welcome to send any questions that you have to MSG or to myself, my email. I apologize, I should have provided that is mfahimi, F-A-H-I-M-I, at m-s-g.com. Thank you very much and hope to talk to you soon.